let me ask you something. Before you became a pimp, did you ever have like a nine to five or was you always on the street in one way, shape or form? Well, one time uh, I was uh, I was looking at my brother. He had a job at this place called Sherlock's Restaurant. And I was looking at him, he was buying clothes and shit, you know, he, you know, he wasn't really making no money, but you know, by that time, maybe a hundred dollars a week. But you know, pants was probably 20, 30 dollars. But every week he had bought two or three pair of pants. He I had to wear his shit. So I said, man, I'm gonna go try working it. So they, they had me as a bus boy and I had to carry the tray. I, I dropped the tray. I said, I'm out this motherfucker. I left my body there, <laughs> left the tray on the ground, everything. I said, fuck this shit, man. They ain't working for nobody. I never had a job again in my life after that. Other, my father, he had, uh, uh, after he got out of the game, he opened up a, a junk business, Ivy Junkin. And uh, he used to go get all these pipes. He'd cut these pipes and shit out of these buildings. And he'd make a lot of money, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a job. You know, some slick shit he was doing. So he asked me to come to work with him one time. And when he was cutting the pipe, the, the dust from the pipe got in my nose. And I started coughing and I walked out on him, you know, so I just, you know, working you is know, never. You keep saying your father was in the game. What game was he in? Was he, was he a pimp? Was it, was he in a, uh, he was a, he was a pimp. He sold heroin, you know, he, uh, he was a gambler. He's a professional gambler. So he cheated niggas for a living. He was a pool shark. He would play uh, on you know, he was that kind of nigga, you know. And he had plenty of bitches, you know what I'm saying? Plenty of bitches. My mom and him often fought about women, you know what I'm saying? So that was his thing. You know, my uncle Greasy, they were dope dealers and hustlers. They had cars and Cadillacs with drop tops with, you know, I always seen that lifestyle. I never been without the street side, you know? So Pops, my uncle Greasy was a pimp. You know, they was pimps and players. They had all the pimps and hoes over by a crib. You know, my mom used to play cars with the hoes and shit, you know, and you know, it was just a, a a never ending, you know, street environment. You know what I'm saying? All the people that came to my house that was my daddy friends eventually when I got in the game, they became my friends, you know. Like old man Jim Dandy, you know, he just died, he died about eighty nine. He was one of my mentors, you know. He taught me how to shoot bad dice, he taught me how to gamble, how to be a player, you know, and finesse and shit, you know. So, you know, I, I was around that shit all my life. You know, you but clearly people, get this thing, honestly. Um, huh? You clearly get this hustling thing, honestly. It's in your you know, DNA. It's yeah, I was born and not sworn. <laughs> there you go. So, I never was a pimp, obviously. How, how do you, like, how do you even approach a woman well, to you know, to sell her body and bring you the money, because that's one of the craziest things that I've ever heard. Well, you know, it's the old saying that a pimp can get anybody to be a hoe, and that's the truth. Because pimps, you know, what I'm saying, me, most of them come from broken homes. Most of them probably had bad situations when they were kids. You know, in my situation, you know, I was molested by my babysitter, a young lady. She Oh, well, she wasn't a young lady. I don't know how she old. She just looked, she was just a very heavy set, dark skinned sister who molested me. How old were you? I was about three years old. Okay. So, a lot of times, you know, my mother, you know, uh, you know, most of us have abandonment issues. You know, like, for example, you know, when I was, till I was five years old, I was the baby. You know, you know, it's nine of us, you know, so I was the last baby, you know, to about four or five years. And then my mother had another son, which is my brother, Tony. So I feel abandoned, you know what I'm saying? I, I miss my mother's love, you know, that love that you get from your parent, you know, you know that never, you know, that never uh, disappeared. So when she didn't show me the love no more, I became the class clown. I would act up in school, you know? I didn't allow myself to fall in love with nobody because I didn't want to experience that situation that I experienced with my mother being the baby and, you know, being, you know, a uh, uh, shower with so much love and then abandoned, you know what I mean? So I had abandoned issues. And I had attention issues. You know, I wanted the attention that I got when I was a child. So I would act out in school. So I end up being a special ed. They said I was attention deficit, you know what I'm saying? And most young African-American men and women go to special ed, ed special, I guess they call it special ed education. Right. You know, they, they have attention deficit. They want 
they crave the attention of their mother. So, you know, that and, you know, being molested at a young age, you know, it, it gave me a certain disposition towards women. I didn't know it because 99% of the shit that we do is unconscious. We don't even know why, but it stems from my childhood. You know, so this is one of my early childhood uh, psychosis, you know what I'm saying, I mean, that was ingrained in me that I didn't even know that I was being, you know, uh, literally affected. I didn't know the reason why I was doing the things that I was doing because I missed the attention of my mother. Then one of my brothers, my oldest brother, Kali, you know, he had went, uh, before we even got into all that, he had went into a, a reformatory school for about three months. And my mom used to go see him every day, you know. So, you know, I believe that in some way, a lot of times when I act out, act out, you know, I, initially when I, I wanted, you know, to, to uh, when I went for jail, jail for forgery and I didn't know what I was doing, I, it seemed like I wanted to go to jail. I wanted my mama to come see me every day, but she didn't come and see me like that. My mama never visited me in prison. Cause she's vowed after my oldest brother went to jail, she would never go see one of her children in jail. So I was hoping to get that same love and respect, but I never did. So it made me a cold hearted person. You know, I did 10 years in prison collectively. So it made me a cold hearted person, it made me desensitized towards men, women, whoever, you know, that's why, you know, if you fuck with me on the streets, I'm gonna punish you seriously. Cause I didn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? I was just desensitized, you know, and. You know, I mean, I carried a gun, you know what I mean? I was ready, I was with the shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, bitch, she fuck with me. She got to, you know, get my money. Ain't try, I don't want no love, none of that shit. You know, I don't want to go. You're not going to do me like my mother did me. You're not going to leave me hanging. You're not going to make me feel so loved and so appreciated and then abandon me. So I had abandoned issues, you know what I'm saying? Me. And, you know, uh, you don't know you have these things until you get much older. You start studying psychology. You start studying, you know, a uh, 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 psycho, psycho, you know, this, the mind, you know, how the mind works. Right. And then, you know, that's what I realized, you know, after many years that that was my problem, you know, and then I, I called my mother at 55, which is about four years ago. I said, Ma, I know why I acted the way I act. He said, why? I said, because the babysitter that you had babysit me, she molested me. And that's why, you know, I was so hard on women. That's why I was so desensitized. That coupled with the fact that I was mad because you didn't come see me while I was in prison. So after I got that out of my chest, you know what I'm saying? That was a, a relief for me, you know, but I, 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 I'm I, one of the few people that figure out why I was a pimp. You know, I was a pimp because of my disposition towards women, you know, being that women, you know, I had bad experience with a woman being molested by a woman. You know, my mother abandoned me, you know, that's, you know, what made me, you know, want to get in the game. You know what I'm saying? I mean, and then, you know, once you get in the game, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you become manipulative and you become desensitized. And so you don't care how you manipulate this woman. You don't care how you finesse her. You got, you know, it's all type of different ways. You sit back and you think of ways how I'm going to turn this broad out. And then once you get in the game, you realize that, damn, the women have been raped too. They have issues of abandonment as well. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so they want attention. So a lot of times, you know, to get their attention, they feel, you know, like they can use their body to get attention you know, tricks, you know, sweat women, you know, that's the attention. They go to strip clubs, they throw money on these girls, they, they get butt naked for attention, you know, so everybody want attention. That's the problem. All of us looking for attention, the male and the female, you know, something happened within our psychosis of being children, because everything, anything that happened to you, whatever happened to you in life, it, it stemmed from your childhood. You might not know that. So, you know, so that being said, you know, a lot of times women would pay men as a scapegoat because it's easy to pay somebody and blame them for their disposition and say, you know, I'm doing it because the pimp want me to do it. Then they say, hmm, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm just a freaky bitch, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and I'm mad at my uncle because he raped me. I'm mad at my pops because he raped me. I'm mad because my brother now run a train on me and we played house and we had sex, you know, and it was incest, you know, and, 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 and my virginity was taken. I can never say that, you know, I had a, you know, a virgin marriage, you know what I'm saying, that I, you know, I never had sex with, my virginity was taken, all this stuff, you know, it creates the pimp and whole lifestyle. Three, two psychotic motherfuckers, you know what I'm saying, you know, they've been through all type of shit, you know, they have all type of issues that are psychologically ingrained, and, you know, and you talk to hoes, you talk to pimps, and you find out that this is the norm, you know, most hoes been molested, most hoes been raped, you know, most hoes, you know, they use their body as a weapon, they learn at a very young age that my daddy want to have sex with me, 
he'd give me cookies if I have sex with him. You know, my uncle, you know what I'm saying? Me, he'd give me money to have sex with me. You know what I mean? And then they they realized the power of the pussy, you know, at a very young age. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.